Welcome back to Movie Recap. Today I will show you a drama, fantasy, sci-fi film from 2021, titled Oxygen. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A woman wakes up inside of a cryogenic medical pod, breaking through her cocoon and taking out the fourth in her arm. The computer comes online informing her that her oxygen levels are at 35%. It tells her that it is her medical interface liaison operator, Milo for short, programmed to answer all her medical needs. The woman is confused and keeps asking where she is. Milo offers her a sedative which she rejects. She asks to be let out, but the computer can't do that. It gives her a progress report on her pod. A heating problem in the processor has caused a depletion of her oxygen reserves, so the medical cryogenics in the pod has been suspended. The woman has another memory of a hospital and thinks that she is in one at the moment. She screams for help, hoping that someone will realize that she is awake. Milo informs her that her oxygen has dropped to 34%. The woman is freaking out, touching the entire pod as she tries to remember why she is in one. First, she thinks she's sick and that she must be monitored from external sides. If there is a problem, she convinces herself, someone will come. The woman asks Milo if someone was informed of her problem. It tells her that a transmission has been sent, but that there is no response yet. She thinks she's safe and that someone will come for her. The woman tries to calm herself down. As she closes her eyes, she remembers herself as a child, then remembers her lover and somebody that could possibly be her mother. The woman suddenly realizes that she doesn't know who she is. Milo tells her patient identity is Omicron 267. She asks to see an image of herself and Milo shows her a holographic reflection. The woman remembers her lover again. Then she remembers herself as a child again. Milo frightens her when he tells her that her oxygen is 33%. It recommends lowering oxygen consumption, prompting an anxious visualization of that by the woman. She also keeps remembering rats in a lab. The woman asks to hear her medical diagnosis. Milo searches for it, but the report is unavailable because the reanimation procedure is incomplete. It will be finished in several minutes. The woman's pleas to get out fall on deaf ears again so she orders it to unlock the pod. Milo initiates the procedure, but it needs an authorization code to complete it. She freaks out because she doesn't have the code. Suddenly, she gets the idea to call the outside. Milo informs her that external communication isn't available. The woman figures out a way to bypass that problem by telling Milo to use the central data line used for the transmission of her data and send an audio file. She tells Milo to call the police. An automated voice answers, then a real person comes through, but the line is terrible. She tells the officer that she's in a pod and running out of oxygen, so they ask her what hospital she's in. The woman says she doesn't know because she can't remember anything and her pod is locked. She also says that she knocked and yelled for help, but no one came. The officer asks for her name and address, but she repeats she doesn't know it. He thinks she's toying with him, but she begs him to believe her and localize her call. Then he asks her to tell him the last thing she remembers. She thinks she remembers an emergency room. The woman asks Milo to determine her location, but it can't. The officer tells her that it takes time to find the transmitter and asks her to stay calm. Naturally, she can't. He tells her to find all the information she can about the pod. She finds the manufacturer cryosolide and reads him the serial number. They still can't find her so the man tells her that he'll find his superior officer. The woman freaks out because she doesn't want to be left alone again, but he still transfers her call. As the transfer is going she says that she should have accepted the sedative. The connection to the police drops. The woman remains surprisingly calm as she tells Milo to search for her DNA. Milo finds one match and brings up her photos on the screen. Her name is Elizabeth Hansen. Suddenly, she remembers herself and her mother, called her Liz. There is a strange noise outside and she screams for help. She gets a call from Captain Moreau from the DPT of Science and Technology. She asks if they found her, but he insists to know her oxygen level first. It's at 31% and if the consumption is moderate it will run out in 73 minutes. With her current level, it will be gone in 43 minutes. Moreau asks her to share all that she can remember. She doesn't understand what's going on and can't focus. Liz asks for the truth and the captain tells her that they can't locate her. According to the manufacturer the pod was destroyed three years ago. She remembers that Milo didn't give her the diagnosis and asks for it, only to have the computer tell her that she's not sick and her life expectancy is 82 years. When she realizes that she's not sick Liz freaks out and the computer tells her just how much. Moro tries to calm her down and tells her to save her breath because they are trying to find her. She tells him that if they meet with the manufacturer they need to get her the codes to open the pod. Moro doesn't know exactly how much time it will take him to get the information. The call drops and Milo can't reconnect because the number doesn't exist. The computer informs her that the oxygen has dropped and her probability of survival is null. Protocols for that situation prompt the computer to initiate sedation. Liz refuses, but the robotic arm goes after her. She refuses and battles with the arm until it goes away. Liz has another memory and calms down a bit when the alarms start blaring because the oxygen has dropped again, at 23%. 
Her memories persist. She can see her lover working on a design for the pod. Milo wakes her up with the oxygen levels, now at 22%. Liz had lost consciousness for 17 minutes since the call with Moreau. She tries to think of someone who can help her, so she tells Milo to search all data in her name. It finds academic articles, press articles, and other things. She asks for the press articles. Liz finds out that she is a Nobel Prize winner and a cryogenics doctor. As she remembers some experiments she was part of, she says that she did all of this to herself. Liz sees her social media profile and realizes the man she has been remembering is her husband, Leo. She looks at a photo of the two of them in Maui, then goes into another memory about him. Liz tells Milo to find his number. It finds two. The first one doesn't connect and the second is answered by an older woman. She begs to speak to Leo urgently, but the woman hangs up. Milo calls back at her order and the woman answers, telling her never to call again. Liz keeps calling back but to no avail. The oxygen drops to 21%. She finally manages to open the restraints on her legs and moves around, looking for a way to open the pod. Nothing looks obvious though. Liz has a hallucination connected to her memory of lab rats. She tries to open the pod again and Milo offers her a sedative again. Liz accepts it so she can break off the needle and use it as a tool to scratch open the pod. She gets electrocuted by the pod for trying to get out. Liz loses hope as the oxygen keeps dropping. The pod gets another call from Moreau who tells her that they will have the codes for her shortly. The oxygen drops 3 more percent and she freaks out thinking that she's losing time. Moreau asks her what else has been happening and she tells him about the hallucinations. He tells her that she's going through a psychotic episode induced by her isolation. So, he suggests she calm herself down by focusing on what she knows is real, like her body. Liz's solution to that is to hurt herself so she can focus on the pain. She remembers Leo again in a medical swab with his name on it. Milo administers an antibiotic so her wound doesn't get infected. She asks Moreau how long she's been missing and he tells her it's been a few days, but no one has reported her missing. Liz tells him about her husband, still misremembering things about her life with him. Suddenly, a distant second voice appears on the line, but Moreau doesn't tell her who it is. Furthermore, he says that she was never married. Liz can't believe it and tells Milo to search for him. It finds nothing, even the pictures of the two of them have changed. She gets upset and tells Moreau that she even spoke to someone on his phone number earlier who knew him. The captain asks her what she had told the woman but then says that she wasn't real. Moreover, he says Leo isn't real either. Moreau tells her things that are supposedly real. She was born in Stockholm and lived with her single mother, who moved them to France when she was six. Liz says her name was Alice. Moreau says it was Isabel. She studied at Oxford where she says she met Leo, still convinced that he's real. Her oxygen drops further and she pleads for the codes as Moro talks to someone else, but tells her that she's hallucinating. Liz thinks that he's behind what's happening to her. She tells Milo to disconnect the call. Suddenly, she remembers Leo with lesions on his body. Then she remembers him getting sicker and both of them going to the hospital. Another call comes through and she rejects it, telling Milo to replay the last 30 seconds of her last call and to turn the volume up when the second voice appears. The voice says to tell her that she's hearing things because of the stress she's under. There is another incoming call which she refuses first and then accepts, thinking someone is messing with her. She asks who it is and why they're doing this to her. It's the older woman on the other line. She tells her that she knows Liz is in a cryogenic chamber and that something must have gone wrong. Liz asks to talk to Leo, but that's not possible. The woman tells her that she can help her, but Liz keeps asking for Leo. She tells her that he's dead. Liz ends the call. Her oxygen drops to 14%. The woman calls again and tells her that she is the only one that could help her. She knows the codes for her pod but begs her not to use them. Liz makes the woman tell her the code and she gives it to Milo. She gets full admin privileges. Liz tells Milo to open the pod, but the woman begs Liz not to do it because she will die if she does. The woman can prove it to her so Liz pauses the unlocking procedure. She tells her to go into the system preferences and find the centrifuge controls, then switches them to zero. Milo turns off the micro thrusters. Suddenly, Liz floats in her pod as Milo tells her that long exposure to zero gravity can be harmful. The woman tells Liz that she isn't on Earth anymore. Milo confirms how far from the planet her location is. Liz initiates the centrifuge rotation and gravity is restored. The woman continues to explain that Liz is in hypersleep for a mission to colonize a tidally locked planet 14 light years from Earth. But they have just left and they still haven't engaged the nuclear power drive. Liz asks if she worked for the Ministry of Defense. The woman says yes because the mission concerned the entire human race that will become extinct in two generations. But that the information can't be made public and that was why Moreau lied to her. He didn't know how much she remembered and how many things she could have shared with the police or anyone else. The woman tells her that everything that the army did since she got into communication with them was to prevent her from recovering her memory. Liz remembers Leo dying in a hospital from a virus that killed millions. The woman tells her that she has been in hypersleep for 12 years. 
Since her oxygen is dropping and she'll be out of range very soon, the woman asks her to let her help because she designed the pods and she can put Liz back into hypersleep. They find out that the processor that prevents brain atrophy is the one that has overheated. The woman tells her that they have to divert its functions to another processor, not in charge of her essential functions. She orders Milo to transfer the data to the processor they found, but it can't be done. The woman gets a visit from the army, so she tells Liz to remember everything that she knows about the pods and find a way to get back to hypersleep before the oxygen drops under 2%. Before the call ends the woman tells her to find Leo so she can find her memories. The oxygen levels drop to 11%. Liz tries to remember by getting the pod to electrocute her again. She only remembers Leo dying in a hospital. Liz shocks herself again and again until she remembers Leo telling her that they will meet again. She asks Milo to find Alice Hansen. Her mom picks up and they have an awkward and interrupted conversation, that ends with Liz telling her that she loves her. They are out of communication range with Earth and her oxygen is down to 6%. Liz asks Milo about the ways in which she could die. The answers are terrifying. The oxygen continues to drop. She asks him to unlock the door, choosing the faster way to die. As Milo begins the procedure, she remembers something more about Leo and aborts the unlocking procedure. Liz asks how many Omicron units there are around her and Milo answers that there are 10,000 units. She asks for a visual and when Milo shows her, she sees a dead body in front of her pod. All of the units are in a ship surrounding her. The ship carrying the pods was hit by an asteroid, many of the pods have been lost. Milo re-engages the UV filtration on her pod. Liz asks how many of the pods are still operational and the number the computer gives her is well over 9,000. However, the status of her pod is considered lost. Liz asks how many people have woken up in their pods. Only one, Milo answers, her. She asks Milo about Leo and tries to find him and make sure his pod is still operational. Suddenly, she remembers the number of his medical file and asks Milo to check if pod number 42 is operational. The computer shows her the fully operational pod and uncovers Leo's face from the cocoon. Liz notices that he hasn't got his scar on his face and realizes something extremely important. She asks Milo to search for her name again and watches a video where the old woman she spoke to explains that she had cracked the transfer of memories from one life form to another. Her experiments in rats have proved that such a thing is possible, down to the smallest detail. The woman in the video is her. Liz asks Milo how old she is and he replies that she is 12. She listens to a recording of her talk to the old woman and realizes that she is her clone. Milo confirms her suspicions. Liz was a clone made to go to another planet, that had never left the pod she is in at the moment. She freaks out, as one would only expect, thinking she's disposable and crying out that she wants to live. The oxygen level falls to 4%. Liz asks Milo to record a message for Leo's clone before she dies. She tells him that she can remember their entire life together and paradoxically feel it as an abyss inside of her because they have never even met. Liz suddenly decides not to give up. She tells Milo to search for alternative processors, but there is another problem. The computer tells her that her chances of survival have dropped below the acceptable parameters and the euthanasia protocols have been initiated. Liz tries to stop the protocol and asks how it's administered. When Milo answers that it is administered intravenously, she remembers taking out her needle and realizes that it will be administered through the harness strap through her abdomen. Liz releases the belt, but the countdown continues. She reaches for the fourth in her foot and takes it out before the drug reaches her. Liz tells Milo to deactivate the processor meant for disaster scenarios and redirect the processor that regulates brain activity through it. She orders the computer to put her back to hypersleep, but that is an impossible task since she has disconnected herself from everything needed to regulate hypersleep. As the oxygen levels become dangerously low, she hallucinates again. When the visions are over, Liz puts her second four back on, then her umbilical belt, and finally the fourth on her arm. Then she places her cerebral monitor back on. Unfortunately, the oxygen level has reached 1%. Milo tells her that she won't survive resuscitation. She apologizes to Leo for not surviving, and Milo terminates the recording. Liz runs out of oxygen but remembers there might still be some left in the other pods. She tells Milo to divert that oxygen to her pod as he puts her back into hypersleep again. It asks her if she wants a sedative, and this time she accepts. The process to get into hypersleep begins, and Milo tells her about the planet she's going to and how they will get there. Before she falls asleep, she asks him to tell her about Maui. She renames her clone to Liz and falls asleep as the oxygen runs out. Liz and Leo reunite as clones, in another solar system, on another planet, and live happily ever after. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.